Good day guys, we are going to discuss some of the possible questions under free hello. That may come up during the bar examination this November. Let's proceed. What is the rule on suspension of payments? A verified petition for suspension of payments may be filed by an individual debtor who possesses sufficient property to cover all his debts, but foresees the impossibility of meeting them when they fall due. What are the effects of the issuance of order suspending payments? First, the court may issue an order suspending any pending execution against the individual debtor. And second, no creditor shall sue or execute proceedings to collect his claim from the debtor from the time of the filing of the petition or suspension of payments and for as long as proceedings remain. What are the exceptions to the effects of the issuance of a order suspending payments? Those creditors having claims for personal labor, maintenance, expense of last illness and funeral of the wife or children of the debtor incurred in the 60 days immediately prior to the filing of the petition and secured creditors, that is properties held as security by secured creditors shall not be subject of such suspension order. Where shall the stay or suspension order not apply? The stay or suspension order shall not apply First, to cases already pending in appeal in the Supreme Court as of commencement date, provided that any final and executory judgment arising from such appeal shall be referred to the court for appropriate action. Second, subject to the discretion of the court, Two cases pending or filed at a specialized court or quasi-judicial agency which, upon determination by the court, is capable of resolving the claim more quickly, fairly, and efficiently than the court, provided that any final and executory judgment of such court or agency shall be referred to the court and shall be treated as a non-disputed claim. Third, to the enforcement of claims against sureties and other persons solidarily liable with the debtor and third party or accommodation mortgager as well as insurers of letters of credit, except when the property subject of the third party or accommodation mortgage is necessary for the rehabilitation of the debtor as determined by the court upon recommendation by the rehabilitation receiver. Fourth, to any form of action of customers or clients of a securities market, participant to recover or otherwise claim monies and securities entrusted to the latter in the ordinary course of the latter's business, as well as any action of such securities market participant or the appropriate regulatory agency or self-regulatory organization to pay or settle such claim or liabilities. Letter E, to the actions of a licensed broker or dealer to sell privileged securities of a debtor pursuant to a securities pledge or margin agreement for the settlement of securities transactions in accordance with the provisions of the Securities Regulation Code and its implementing rules and regulations. Letter F, the clearing and settlement of financial transactions through the facilities of a clearing agency or similar entities duly authorized, registered, and or recognized by the appropriate regulatory agency like the Banco Central ng Pilipinas and the SEC as well as any form of action of such agencies or entities to reimburse themselves for any transaction settled for the debtor. And, Last, any criminal action against the individual debtor or owner, partner, director, or officer of a debtor shall not be affected by the proceeding commenced under this Act. What is the concept of rehabilitation under the free law? 
Rehabilitation shall refer to the restoration of the debtor to a condition of successful operation and solvency if it is shown that its continuance of operation is economically feasible and its creditor can recover by way of the present value of payments projected in the plan, more if the debtor continues as a going concern that if it is immediately liquidated. What is the commencement order? This refers to the order issued by the Rehabilitation Court allowing the commencement of the rehabilitation proceedings after it found the petition for rehabilitation to be sufficient in form and substance. What is the effectivity date of a commencement order? Commencement date shall refer to the date on which the court issues the commencement order, which shall be retroactive to the date of filing of the petition for voluntary or involuntary proceedings. What is the contents of a commencement order? First, a declaration that the debtor is under rehabilitation. Second, the appointment of a rehabilitation receiver. Third, a directive for all creditors to file their verified notices of claim. Last, an order staying claims against the debtor. What are the effects of a commencement order? Unless otherwise provided for in this act, the court's issuance of a commencement order shall, in addition to the effects of a stay or suspension order described in section 16 hereof, a. Vest the rehabilitation receiver with all the powers and functions provided for in this act, such as the right to review and obtain all records to which the debtors, management, and directors have access, including bank accounts of whatever nature of the debtor, subject to the approval of the court, of the performance bond filed by the rehabilitation receiver. b. Prohibit or otherwise serve as the legal basis for rendering null and void the results of any extrajudicial activity or process to seize property, sell encumbered property, or otherwise attempt to collect on or enforce a claim. b. Prohibit or otherwise serve as the legal basis for rendering null and void the results of any extrajudicial activity or process to seize property, sell encumbered property, or otherwise attempt to collect on or enforce a claim against the debtor after the commencement date unless otherwise allowed in this act, subject to the provisions of Section 50 hereof. C. Serve as the legal basis for rendering null and void any set-off after the commencement date of any debt owed to by the debtor to any of the debtor's creditors. D. Serve as the legal basis for rendering null and void the perfection of any lien against the debtor's property after the commencement date. E. Consolidate the resolution of all legal proceedings by and against the debtor to the court. Provided, however, that the court may allow the continuation of cases in other courts where the debtor has initiated the suit. Note that attempts to seek legal or other recourse against the debtor outside of these proceedings shall be sufficient to support a finding of indirect contempt of the court. What is the effectivity and duration of commencement order? The commencement order shall be effective for the duration of the rehabilitation proceedings for as long as there is substantial likelihood that the debtor will be successfully rehabilitated. What is the exception to the effectivity and duration of commencement order? Unless lifted by the court. What is the concept of a rehabilitation receiver under the FRIA law? The rehabilitation receiver shall refer to the person or persons, natural or juridical, appointed as such by the court, pursuant to this act, and which shall be entrusted with such powers and duties as set forth herein. What is a rehabilitation plan under the FRIA law? The rehabilitation plan shall refer to a plan by which the financial well-being and viability 
of an insolvent debtor can be restored using various means including, but not limited to, debt forgiveness, debt rescheduling, reorganization or quasi-reorganization, the shonin pago, debt equity conversion, and sale of the business or parts of it, as a going concern or setting up of new business entity as prescribed in section 62 thereof or other similar arrangements as may be approved by the court or creditors. Discuss the rule on the cram down power of the court. The court may confirm the rehabilitation plan despite the rejection by the creditors provided the circumstances required by law are present. What are the circumstances where the cram down power of the court may apply? First. The rehabilitation plan complies with the requirements specified by law. Second, the rehabilitation receiver recommends the confirmation of the rehabilitation plan. Third, the shareholders, owners, or partners of the juridical debtor lose at least their controlling interest as a result of the rehabilitation plan. Fourth, the rehabilitation plan would likely to provide the objecting class of creditors with compensation which has a net present value greater than that which they would have received if the debtor were under liquidation. How is a rehabilitation proceeding converted into a liquidation proceeding? If no rehabilitation plan is confirmed within one year from the date of the filing of the petition, the proceedings may, upon motion or motu proprio, be converted into one for the liquidation of the debtor. Discuss the nature of a liquidation order. The liquidation order shall first declare the debtor insolvent, b. Order the liquidation of the debtor and in case of a juridical debtor, declare it as dissolved, c. Order the sheriff to take possession and control of all the property of the debtor except those that may be exempt from execution. Order the publication of the petition or motion in a newspaper of general circulation once a week for two consecutive weeks. E. Direct payments of any claims and conveyance of any property due to the debtor to the liquidator. Prohibit payments by the debtor and the transfer of any property by the debtor. Direct all creditors to file their claims with the liquidator within the period set by the rules of procedure. H. Authorize the payment of administrative expenses as they become due. I. State that the debtor or creditors who are not petitioners may submit the names of other nominees to the position of liquidator. Last. Set the case for hearing for the election and appointment of the liquidator which date shall not be less than 30 days nor more than 45 days from the date of the last publication. What is the effect of a liquidation order? Upon the issuance of the liquidation order, first the juridical debtor shall be deemed dissolved and its corporate or juridical existence terminated. Second, Legal title to and control of all the assets of the debtor, except those that may be exempt from execution, shall be deemed vested in the liquidator or, pending his election or appointment with the court. C. All contracts of the debtor shall be deemed terminated and or breached unless the liquidator within 90 days from the date of his assumption of office declares otherwise and the contracting party agrees. D. Stay all actions. What are the rights of a secured creditor? The liquidation order shall not affect the rights of a secured creditor to enforce his lien in accordance with the applicable contract or law. A secured creditor may first waive his rights under the security or lien, prove his claim in the liquidation proceeding, and share in the distribution of the assets of the debtor. Second, maintain his rights under his security or lien. What is a liquidator under the free law? A liquidator shall be elected by the creditors. Only creditors who have filed their claims 
within the period set by court and those claims are not barred by the statute of limitations will be allowed to vote in the election of the liquidator. A secured creditor will not be allowed to vote except first when he waives his security or lien or second he has the value of the property subject of his security or lien fixed by agreement with the liquidator and is admitted for the balance of his claim. When can the court appoint a liquidator? On the date set for election of the liquidator, the creditors do not attend. The creditors who attend fail or refuse to elect a liquidator. Third, after being elected, the liquidator fails to qualify or last a vacancy occurs for any reason whatsoever. In any of the cases provided herein, the court may instead set another hearing for election of the liquidator. The rehabilitation receiver who was administering the debtor prior to the commencement of the liquidation can be appointed as a liquidator. In the determination of claims under the free along, what is the period upon which a liquidator is tasked to prepare a preliminary registry of claims of secured and unsecured creditors? Within 20 days from his assumption of office. When shall secured creditors be considered as unsecured creditors? First, when they have waived their security or lien, and second, when they have fixed the value of the property subject of their security or lien by agreement with the liquidator and is admitted as a creditor for the balance. What is the requirement for each claim before it is paid? It must be proven first. What is the rule on the right of set-off? If the debtor and the creditor are mutually debtor and creditor of each other, one debt shall be set off against the other and only the balance, if any, shall be allowed in the liquidation proceedings. What should be present in a liquidation plan under the FRIA law? The liquidation plan shall as a minimum enumerate first all the assets of the debtor, second all the claims against the debtor, and third a schedule of liquidation of the assets and payments of the claims. What is the duty of the court with regards to exempt property? To exempt and set to part, for the use and the benefit of the said insolvent, such real and personal property as is by law, exempt from execution and also a homestead. What is the rule on the sale of assets in liquidation? General rule, the liquidator may sell the unencumbered assets of the debtor and convert the same into money through a public auction. As an exception, a private sale may be allowed with the approval of the court if First, the goods to be sold are of a perishable nature and are liable to quickly deteriorate in value or are disproportionately expensive to keep or maintain. The private sale is for the best interest of the debtor and his creditors. What is the basis for the payment of creditors? Only in accordance with the provisions of the liquidation plan.